What, what, what habits disturb your peace? What things do you do that disrupts your peace? Now, 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 now here's the assumption I'm making. The assumption I'm making is that you are constantly growing spiritually so God is able to identify things in you that are no longer healthy for you, no longer healthy for your marriage, no longer healthy for how you rear your children, no longer healthy for your finances. Is the Lord Kendra able to evolve in you so that you come to know? Bishop Walter Thomas did a sermon years ago, Bracey, uh, years ago in St. Paul. It was one of the most amazing sermons I, I have heard in terms of a revelation of growth. Here's the, he, 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 he read a passage about when David was a younger king. And he read, and it was one of these passages there we wouldn't pay any attention to. And, and it talked about he had around him a, a general and a this and a that and a that. But then he read a passage later on. And the passage, Angela, watch this. All right now. And the passage was included his list of his cabinet and it included a priest. And here's what, it, and, and here's what Bishop said. Bishop said, the older he got, the more he knew he needed God. So watch this, Sharon. He included a priest as a part of his inner circle. And it was this amazing revelation. When you're younger, you build everything around the strength to conquer. As you grow, you build everything around the need for God. That's huge. Is anybody growing to need God? Now, here's what's deep. When you're young, you get up in the morning on what you think is your own strength. The older you get, you get up knowing you need the Lord to help you just put one soul. So you say stuff like, before you even wake up, you, I, mean, I mean, before you even get out of bed, you say, help me. Lord, give me. Huh? You don't say that 19. You just pop up. Oh, but when you get to a certain age, you start praying before you shift out of bed. You start saying, Lord, I'm, I'm tired now. I'm tired. And if you don't get me through this day, you ain't even, you ain't even started the day yet. You don't get me through this day. Okay. Here's the second thing in terms of insulating your life. And well, 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 let me go back to say, to, and say one more thing. Um, when you identify the tendencies, habits, and relational quirks that threaten the peace of God within you, you watch this, watch this, Joe. You have to actually value the peace of God. Here's the revelation. You have to actually, Andrea, you have to actually value the peace of God. You have to actually know what the peace of God feels like, and then you have to value it. A, a man or a woman that's never been able to hear, they, they don't have the same feelings as the person that could hear that no longer can. Once you've had something and you lose it, and so, and so one of the things that my mom said to me one of the things that my mom said to me years ago, years ago, she said the evidence of whether it's God's will or not is that peace comes with it. Okay, I know we're tired. I know we had a long night, but I need you to grasp this because, because I'm telling you now, you know, you know I, was, I was more committed to not doing this. I told Sharon and Kim more than once yesterday, not going to do anything thought of something creative else to do. And the Lord said, no, this morning, you need to share what's in, you, in, in your spirit to share. And, and, and listen to me, a part of why so many of us end up in all of these unhealthy places is we don't have the internal gauge of the peace of God to convict us when we start to drift in the places that are not God for us. 
You gotta have something, Bracy, that wakes you up and says, whoa, 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 player. Whoa, don't you sense disruption coming? Don't you sense no peace here? How, how you, okay, okay, you getting ready to make this decision? What is, what, what is it that is supposed to bother you before you say that? We got to get to a point that we get convicted before we do it. Why? Because what starts to happen is the peace of God stops. All of a sudden you can't rest. All of a sudden you don't feel that peace. All of a sudden that relationship bothers you. You ain't settling no more. You don't have any peace. So all of a sudden you, you got a thought forming in your mind about your leader. You got a, a thought forming in your mind about me? Peace ought to disturb you. You ought to go, you know what? I, that ain't even, I can't even. Okay, God, I release that. I start forming a thought about Sharon, about Mother Your, and I start losing my peace. You got to have something left to, that when you get around certain people, you don't even feel comfortable no more. You go, whoo, whoo. Ooh, and they say, what's wrong with you? This don't feel right. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind and the peace of God shall stand God over you, which means once the peace moves, stuff starts to bombard me and bum rush me. Once the peace moves, then my face starts looking like, like this. Once the peace moves, then all of a sudden I'm not at ease. And here's what's deep. I become defensive. I become, I become verbal. I become vocal. I become negative. Why? Because peace won't let you speak life. Peace will make you speak life. The absence of peace will make you speak everything but life. That's why the enemy comes after your decisions. Peace of God. You got to identify stuff that messes with your peace of God. You got to identify people that disturb your peace. The moment you get finished talking to them, they have so invaded your peace until you just, you, in fact, in fact, you up 30 minutes having a conversation with yourself about something they said or did to you. And you go, this ain't, this ain't God. This ain't God, uh-uh, uh-uh. And, and so here's what you do, Charles, you mock them. Anybody know what you do when you mark something? You mark it. You say, okay, this here, this I gotta pay attention to. Because if they did it once, there's a second one in them. All right, watch this. Watch this. His second thing, and this comes with maturity. You must trust the Holy Spirit and confidently live your life governed by discernment. You must trust the Holy Spirit and confidently live your life governed by discernment. Every, this, every decision you make, you ain't going to have no facts. You got to trust the Holy Spirit and live your life by discernment. When, when, when Sharon approached me, when Sharon and I had a conversation about her becoming my executive assistant, Sharon, did, did, did I interview you? Did you have a formal interview? No. Did I, um, did I bring you before anybody to be evaluated? No. Do I have a resume on file for you? Right. So how you get a how you get an assignment with none of the hiring process? I can't get no help here. And since everybody tells me how incredible she is, then guess what? Maybe Kevin, I discern something. Yeah. Mm. See, Stefan, here's what's deep. And 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 see, and, and see, here's the tough thing. The more you spiritualize your life, 
the less you need worldly processes to make decisions. Y'all ain't helping me. Some of y'all are so corporate till you ain't kingdom. Y'all ain't helping me. Oh, then we gonna have church on a Saturday morning. You spend your whole life being smart and ended up missing it. Discernment is the, but here's what's deep. Discernment, discernment to most people, Dan, is a crapshoot. So you see discernment as a hit or miss. It ain't hit or miss, because if the Holy Ghost tells you to do it, you will never miss it, even if it don't look right in the beginning. Here's the tough thing. You spend your whole life living by worldly concepts and coming to church and trying to interpret God by what you got on your, in, in your company. You gotta get this, the Holy Ghost don't operate by no system but the kingdom. If we had to put everybody in here through evaluations and reviews and interviews, most of us wouldn't qualify for Jack. Not in the kingdom. Kim, I ain't got no resume on you. I don't know nothing about you outside of what I see in church and what the Lord shows me in the spirit. And, and, and here's what's tough, Gracie. Sometimes the Lord don't let you see everything. And if you ain't got a prayer life, you're going to keep making decisions based on what you got to have proven to you. I need some spiritual folk in here today. I need you to understand that God don't always prove everything to you before he requires you to walk in it. He doesn't always hear me yet to tell you, okay, okay, I'm going to tell you the outcome now so I can get your buy-in. The devil is a lie. My buy-in ain't got jack to do with whether I know the outcome. If the Holy Ghost say take three steps, I'm taking three steps. I don't even know if the three steps is going to get me anywhere. I just know the Holy Ghost, yes, Lord, told me to take three steps. That's why you need a prayer life, you need a worship life, and you need to keep your heart pure so the Holy Ghost can talk to you. You ain't got time to be walking in stuff that will disrupt your peace and your inability to hear God. Need you to slap your neighbor high five and tell him you gotta hear God in this season. You ain't got time to be listening to your neighbor. You ain't got time to have nobody in your life that fills your head with a bunch of negative stuff. You gotta hear God and go shake it by. You gotta wake up every day and say, Holy Ghost, talk to me. Talk, 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 talk to me. Why? Because you got too much to lose to miss it this season. Whether y'all believe it or not, I've been praying so much, I ain't missing nothing. I'm picking up stuff, and what I ain't picking up, he's showing me through, watch this. This is a major revelation. What I ain't picking up, he's allowing me to see without it damaging anything. Double, that's huge. Because sometimes by the time you see it, the damage is done. He'll let you see it and there'll be no damage. By the time you catch wind, it don't hurt you. And all God did was kept you covered from it because it was never supposed to be in your space in the first place. And the only reason you caught wind of it now was so you could make an exit decision. Lord have mercy. You got to trust the Holy Spirit and confidently live governed by discernment. If I could get leaders, Top Cotton, living in discernment, do you know what God would do in this house? If Charles, all of our leaders live by the discernment of the Holy Spirit, if leaders was hearing God, I mean really hearing God. See, I'm uncomfortable with some of your cliques because I know you don't pray to, when you're together. I know you don't pray when you're together. You critique, you talk, you plan, and you complain. 
you don't pray. I got to call it out. The Holy Ghost told me to call it out. Now, I ain't got to call nobody name, but I need you to hear what I'm saying in the spirit. Some of you are in cliques where you don't pray together. You don't seek God together. You talk, you joke, you laugh, you eat, you play, you argue, but you don't pray. So there's no discernment in your circle. So some of y'all are trying to do stuff in the kingdom without spiritualizing your relationships. Ain't nobody talking to me today. I need everybody that's on the gathering to spend a week in prayer before you start talking about what we do next year. I need everybody in the ushers ministry, in the choir ministry. I need everybody on the deacons ministry. I need the deaconess. I need some praying leaders around me who can catch the Holy Ghost. I need, I need an executive pastor who, we will, who, who the staff will stumble on you on the altar, on your face, crying out to God, give me direction. I need a man's ministry leader who ends up in the altar before he starts running into the meeting. I need you to show up at 7 a.m. on Saturday instead of showing up at 855. Y'all ain't helping me. I need you to get so needy for God until my couples ministry leaders are laying on their face. Why? I need to get the mind of God because every time I do it, I miss it. 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 I need to get the mind of God. I need that's how that's how you get disturbed. You get the mind of God. God, what are you? What are you saying? What are you saying? Okay, God, what are you saying? And then when that happens, wait a second, I'll have to come in and correct you. Because how am I going to correct the mind of God? God's going to let there be agreement. Some of this conflict that swirls around our circles is because you got one or two or everybody not in prayerful agreement. Have a marriage where the partners don't pray and see how long you last. No, no, have a marriage where you and your spouse don't pray together. The enemy comes in when you stop spiritualizing your house and you start worrying about bills and all this other stuff. If you keep your life before God, God will cover everything around you. Can I get anybody to believe that? That's why the enemy likes to distract your day so you ain't praying, you ain't reading, you ain't laying before God. Then he puts you around people that never tell you, have you prayed about that? They don't never ask Tony, Tony, did you pray about that? They'll never ask you, Kenyatta, have you heard God about this situation? No, they joke about it, they laugh about it, they give advice. You don't need nobody to give you advice. You need somebody to push you to God. You don't need nobody to tell you, why well, I think it's a bad idea. You need somebody to say, you know what, I've been praying and I want to hear God with you. I need some people in this house that, 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 that this year we're going to spend the rest of the year laying before God because if I get some prayer warriors in this house that are discerning the mind of yes Lord, I need somebody to say, God, I want to know your mind. I want to know. I want to know your mind. I want to know your mind. I want to know your mind. Hey, gosh, I, yes, Lord, I want to know your mind. I want to know what you're thinking, God. I want to know what your will is for me. I want to tap into your purpose. Lord, I want to know your mind. I want to figure out where you are. Uh, uh, Lord, okay. Watch this. You, you got you to gotta start walking in discernment. Romans, uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Someone find it for me. Romans 6, 12. Uh, Romans 6, 12. Someone, someone find it. Romans 6, 12. Read it for me. Just stand up and read it. Romans 6, 12. Okay, Sister so Graham. Sin must no longer rule in your mortal body. No longer rule. Sin must no longer rule in your mortal body so that you obey the desires of your natural Read verse 13. Nor must you surrender any part of yourselves to sin to be used for wicked purposes. Instead, give yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and surrender your whole being to him to be used for righteousness purposes. Sin must not be your master. For you do not live under law, 
You must live under such an authority to God till the Holy Spirit becomes an active presence in your life. He, he, here's where, Janice, I need you, going to begin to desire God at a much deeper level. You must begin to know when, Henrietta, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about a situation. So some of you, Cheryl, are so strategically connected to the vision of this house. Some of you are so strategically connected, Agena, to the vision of this house. I, I love the, I, I love the, I love the playfulness of last night. I love the, um, I, I, I love the, uh, and where I'm looking for a word that would somehow capture and capsulize last night and Thursday. Just a real playful, fun, uh, real family environment. This has been, to me, and in my 15 and a half years, this has been probably the best experience corporately I've seen. Um, everything that went on, uh, to me, was acceptable without going beyond the boundaries. And I'm wise enough as a leader to pull it back. That's why yesterday evening, to begin, I had him playing gospel music as a reminder that we still kingdom. Yeah, yeah, I, I know sometimes I, I look schizophrenic, but I'm wise enough to know you don't, you don't erase the line and then let folk draw it. So you gotta have leaders that know how to draw that line too. That go, okay, this, 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 okay, we can't go here, cause then we start giving permission to children among us in the name of God. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Now, the, 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 the powerful thing about this is that the enemy comes against you strategically when he knows you don't spend enough time with God. See, it's, Ernestine is different. He, he comes at mature believers differently than he comes at immature believers. BJ, an immature believer can get duped by a conversation. An immature believer can get duped by a conversation. It doesn't even have to be, it doesn't even have to be the content of it. It, it can just be, it, it can be me and Bracey sitting around having a conversation and a conversation can throw me off center. I'm too mature to be thrown by a conversation now. Huh? So, so, some of you, Gwen, are too mature to be thrown by a conversation, Jeanette. It, a conversation ain't going to throw you. The, the enemy's going to have to do a whole lot more, Stefan, to throw you now, Kevin, than when you it, were an immature believer. So the goal of the enemy now, Deborah, is, 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 is he, he knows, Dan, certain things are not going to work. He knows it. He knows certain things are not going to work, Tony. So he, he now attacks you differently. And here's how he tries to get you, Denise. He tries to get you to minimize your spiritual activity so he can begin to invade you in subtle ways with things that get you to consider options. <laughs> God, that is huge. Listen. When you walk with God, you ain't got options. Okay, trying to help you. Here's what's deep. Don't be duped by choices and options. By the nature of who you are, he gives you the privilege to choose. But by the nature of who you're called to be, you ain't got no options. Okay, okay, is anybody catching the revelation? He's never gonna take away from me choice, but he ain't gonna give me options. I ain't got no option to be here, but I can choose to stay. Okay, Jesus had the choice to die, but he had no options. 
listen, listen. If I want the will of God, there's only one path. I ain't got no options. Okay, 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 okay. You got to catch the revelation. If Listen, listen. If I want the will of God, there, there are no options. This ain't an option. That ain't an option. This is the only path. I got choices. But I ain't got no options. Until you remove options, you're going to always make choosing comp convoluted. But the moment you have no options, you ain't got no choice. Which means that if I ain't got no choice, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Why am I going to have a discussion for four hours about something that ain't an option? God said do it, and then you going to have a discussion with somebody about whether you should? That's four hours you should have been doing something. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. I got remember Saturday morning. I'm acting like it's Sunday. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Here's the third thing. Good God. What time is it? 11 o'clock? Okay. I'm going to get y'all out of here way before 12. Watch this. Here's the third thing. And this is huge. This is huge. Cotton, this is huge what I'm getting ready to say. Watch this. To insulate your life, you have to accept the flaws of people that God commits you to and be willing to support them through their process of growth. You have to accept the flaws of people that God ordains that you're committed to and then be willing to support them through their process of growth. You have to accept the flaws of people that God has called you to be committed to, that God has ordained that you be committed to. You have to accept their flaws. <laughs> and then be willing to support them through the process of growth. When God ordains something or someone in your life, it does not, okay, I say it like this. Y'all know, anyone that knows me well knows, where's Devin? Devin in here? Okay. Devin in my transition has been a, a real godsend over the last year of my life. Because I've literally had to to, to start from scratch. Devin is much better at putting stuff together than I will ever be. All right, you know, you know, you, you know Sharon helped me pick out stuff. Devin and, and Kevin on occasion, uh, Kevin and you know, a couple brothers helped put stuff together. Because I always end up with a screw. And it's not one of them extra ones. I had to put together some bar stool chairs, and it, the chairs, it said okay. But every now and then it wobbles, and I can't seem to find what the missing piece is. But I know I got something left, and so, so. Uh, well, when you go to, all y'all know this. See, I'm the guy who wants to buy what's already assembled. I'll pay 25 extra dollars. I'm the dude that will, anybody like that? I, I could, could, first of all, I gotta put it, I gotta drag that big old box to the car. Then, I gotta drag it in the house. Then I gotta open it. Then I got to throw away the box. That's just too much. I could be watching TV. Then I got to read the instructions, look at the picture on the box while reading the instructions. And Andre, by the time I go through all that, it's three hours of my life gone. It never comes, pre it never comes already assembled. So I go to somebody who has the patience and has the skill to put together and he ain't gonna ever have no screws left. Then he gonna always make sure, Dan, that it's tight. See, I'm gonna do it and then I'll tighten it later. But I'm gonna use it now. Anybody feeling me? And he gonna make sure it's tight. He gonna go through that whole process. 
But here's the tough part. Because it doesn't come a symbol, I got to have the patience to put it together. Okay. God's going to put people in your life that don't come a symbol. God's going to let you catch them while they're still in the box. Okay, y'all got to get this. God's going to let you catch them while they're still in the box. And here's what's deep. You're going to have a picture of what they can look like, but you ain't going to have a completed product. So you're going to have to have the patience to put them together or to love them through the process. Now, if you're not ordained to be in somebody's life, they're going to frustrate the out of you but if you are ordained to be in somebody's life you don't have to sometimes tighten a screw here take out a screw re reassemble it some of you are ordained to be in this ministry but you didn't come here packaged you didn't come here complete you came here in the box so you know what you gotta learn to do Without being judgmental, you got to accept their flaws. You got to know this is who they are in this season. And then you have to accept it. Now, this is tough because most of us think we ain't got time for flaw acceptance. But I ain't talking about people that ain't ordained. I'm talking about ordained relationships, ordained places. Listen, can I be real, real, real with my church? Listen, I've been doing this ministry 15 years. It's certain things I don't even want to deal with now after 15 years. It's certain things that frustrate the mess out of me after 15 years. It's certain places I feel like I should be now after 15 years that I'm not yet. It's certain things or is it that I know I'm supposed to walk in. So it's tough for me when, watch this, I go all over the country and then I come back home sometimes and I see some stuff after 15 years I ain't got no business seeing. It's some stuff I should not be seeing after 15 years. But you know what? God told me this morning, he says, son, they're still tightening the screws. You're still putting a piece here and a piece there. So I don't need you to lose your mind. Some stuff you see is we still working on people. Are you committed enough to them to love them while I'm still working on them? Are you committed enough to me to be with them while, while, while watch this, while I'm reassembling it? Because watch this, sometimes you get put together, but you ain't put together right. He got to actually break you down and do it again. I need somebody to figure out. In fact, you ought to tell your neighbor that's what's happening. God is working on me. And sometimes when I want to look like I'm complete, I ain't even close. I still got a whole lot of stuff to work on. But when God put, yes Lord, put somebody in your life, they will walk with you through the process without a bad attitude. Because the last thing I need is for you to be sitting around here being nasty with me while we putting it together. I need you to love me through this. I don't need you to be complaining about, you know what, I'm so tired of dealing with you. Well, boo-boo, step and move. Because in this season, I got to do what I got to do. And I got to work on this thing. And I, I know I don't look pretty right now. But eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. You don't know how close I really Did nobody get up for this this morning? I need you to slap your neighbor high five and tell them, I'm a work in process. <laughs> I'm a work in process. I'm going somewhere. I'm a work in process. Yes, Lord, God is working on. So when you insulate your life, you can only have ordained people in it. Because if you got unordained people in it, their flaws are going to drive you bonkers. And you're going to get so stuck on. Watch this. When, if, if, stand up, Joe. Now, come, come here, son. Take, take, take off one of your shoes. All right. Now, watch this. When someone is ordained, you don't focus on the one shoe, not on the foot. You focus on the fully dressed. See, what the enemy wants you to do is focus on that. On that. And then you're going to blame the hold up on the shoe. Uh-uh. If you really want to move, we can pick up the shoe. Come on. I carry the shoes. 
this ain't gonna be the reason why we don't get to where we're supposed to get to. So in fact, in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually help you put the shoe on. I'm gonna hold you till you get in the shoe. I need somebody to get this. You are sitting around here complaining about people that are supposed to be in your life. And here's what's deep. If they, listen, let me help you. Boo boo, here's reality. I am the ordained man of God in your life. You got to ride with me or you ain't riding with nobody. In other words, if you can't handle who I am, then we got problems.